so it's not just a challenge to follow justice murli dharan or a challenge also to follow very eminent privacy activists it's a challenge for an rti activist to be in this room uh and it's a challenge to be in a room which says privacy supreme but i think nobody is supreme <laughs> the truth is that you can be in any room you like the supreme are elsewhere um so i was told to look at welfare and social security in digital india which i could do very easily and very powerfully but i think that's not enough and why i think it's not enough is because welfare and social security concern the poor and these issues fundamentally ideologically principally theoretically concern the poor in very fundamental ways and even though they don't have the articulation for it they have actually better answers than many of us they just don't have a chance to put it forth so please do why not i do talk about i'll talk about very real things and real people and they will be very powerful but do also uh join in that kind of effort which may not all have the right words and the articulation to see where it is that they are trying to reach in this battle of real empowerment um don't start it yet uh the empowerment itself is kind of where we have to look of course we often to do with privacy i don't think rti activists ever say there shouldn't be privacy and the rti law had a particular provision for it there has to be harmony between rights and somewhere what i am going to speak about is that effort to find harmony harmony between rights not harmony between some theory and the other but harmony between real rights of real people and each one of these both privacy as well as a whole range of rights that they have are extremely important just a little bit about looking at digital uh data and the whole future of privacy we did an article aruna and i on the digit which is also i mean these acronyms are deadly dpdp b it was at that time and it's now become a uh because it's become an act and it started off with and you will all recognize it when i use a word humpty dumpty said in a rather scornful tone it means just what i choose it to mean neither more nor less the question is said alice whether you can make words mean so many different things the question is said humpty dumpty which is to be master that's all put to swami judgment can say what it likes the master will decide what it means we can have all kinds of words and now i'll get straight into aadhar and then we'll come to this bit where we show what aadhar means to people aadhar has very very well been looked at by justice muralidhar and i would like to say that in that entire bit that he talks about one bit i mean there are many bits that i agree with entirely but we went uh, aruna and i personally but all the mkss went also to the supreme court against the aadhar on a different basis from privacy and surveillance not that we didn't agree with that and we went because we wanted to look at what aadhar was saying claimed to be doing because aadhar came in under this guise of trying to help the poor what it claimed to be doing and because we work with the poor we work with those communities we thought we were best placed to be able to say what it really did and so three things aadhar came in first of all inclusion we'll include everyone people don't have an identity people don't have a way of being identified we'll include everyone how exclusionary it is is incredible all of us know it now but people and feel it and what it means is incredible aadhar is going to increase efficiency greatly all digital things of course per se it's an axiomatic truth increase efficiency that's what again the master says what it does to people in terms of efficiency also is something and you can efficiently kill them as well that's also part of that and the third is it will remove corruption 
and it is so damn arbitrary because again the master decides what is corruption and what is not so that entire set of things is something that you'll see very dramatically so adar said i actually see that it's a carefully constructed double speak it holds itself out as a benevolent master out to include to do all these things that it's saying to empower but actually it empowers the state vis-a-vis the people as justice murli the said it empowers the state vis-a-vis the people and not the people vis-a-vis the state it came in as a money bill which it had nothing to do with and it said of course we are not mandatory we are only compulsory <laughs> so the idea of you can get away with what you like the supreme court will say not mandatory not mandatory lena hi padega uske bina nahi milega kuch bhi so that just have a little bit of a look now and we'll see and just now actually just before we start this in two locations in rajasthan people who are blaming me for being here not there they are trying to fight to get their pension rights to get their rights for often children who are children of widows and orphans their rights and what is holding them is basically a digital public infrastructure aadhar based monopoly digital public infrastructure this is from some years ago this is when we started when the aadhar unleashed itself on us and we started on a battle that we still haven't got away dakuma was marked as dead in government records she was one of 12 lakh people in rajasthan pensioners who had been marked as dead in our panchayat there were 11 marked as dead dakuma was one in our panchayat out of those 11 nine were alive two had died after they had been marked dead but you can see a little bit of that monster that's very pretty ha ha you can angular media ko to machine mein nahi de nahi ja ke aadhar card hai aadhar card hai kya koi thi ki ye hai aadhar card hai and ka ke ko khat khale ha to kan ka bhi mile acha and go bhi mile खाते <laughs> okay so we'll just stop that for 2 minutes and just if you can get the powerpoint going now along with dakuma i'll just show you some of the photographs of other people at that time that was dakuma this was another these are the 11 in our panchayat this couple was just living on the road their pensions had been stopped you can see the husband at the back the wife in front they were literally living where we took a photograph this is how they were living and their pensions both their pensions had been stopped the next one oh those photos have not come ah this one you can see that lady she this one this one all of them literally pensions was the only thing that was actually giving them a little bit of dignity vis-a-vis their families and a little bit of their right to life and today even now just now in both ajmer and in rajsamand where where i will go today the people have been working on trying to where they said people were not verified as alive or not on their digital infrastructure because you first put thumb impressions then you put iris but it's not just that you have one database which is central which is aadhar you have state database which is jan aadhar you have pensions which are mixed up you have to look at with whether your election commission card is matching your aadhar card is matching your jan aadhar card so they said no no we'll give you only one identity actually you need 20 and all 20 need to match wherever so everything that they have claimed about the so called digital di- public infrastructure is disastrous and the single thing is that you are sa- standing there saying 
as things as ridiculous as if your data says that you are a woman and you are a man, the state government has to verify that no, actually you are a woman. So you're standing in front of the SDM saying, I am a woman. The SDM is a person who's a sanctioning authority, but someone walk, marked man and there's a contradiction. And for months you are not getting it because the machine and that database together will say whatever it says. The machine says your thumb impression, you're not Nikhil, even if the whole damn village says you're Nikhil. So we, we are in such a dystopian world vis-a-vis -vis what we call either intelligence, it's neither artificial nor intelligence, or what we call public infrastructure because it's not actually made towards work, working for people in public. Um, so in terms of inclusion, those 10 lakh people were people who would have got their pensions, maybe more inefficiently, if they hadn't been this whole DBT infrastructure. But at least there wasn't this monopoly that would say that unless it works there, and unless you get on it, and until you meet all its requirements, you are actually facing not just digital death, you're facing death. You are dying while it's on. And it is a human rights violation. Each one of those are solid human rights violations. Their right to life is being taken away. And each one of them, and that's why I'm saying, and we are people, again, we are people who have been fighting for information. We have been fighting to use information. In fact, out of this, we built a very big portal to expose because everything that is here in this entire structure is controlled over and over again upwards. Uh, let's take the next slide. That is pensions. This is to give you an idea, just now, from today. That was in 2016, Dakuma's story and 10 lakh pensioners. This can, I can't read it, I'm sorry, but it will give you an example, actually. Someone has been marked out of state. They are not out of state. These are all people who are going to be presented to the collector tomorrow because they are all there. Every single one of them, and it's example from one panchayat, one little panchayat. They are going to be presented because that person had to get everything to match or say that no, they are either dead or out of state or duplicate. So they are just being marked like Dakuma was marked dead. These people are being marked now out of state because it's a more convenient thing. And tomorrow I can give you a guarantee by day after we'll have things running around, but it'll take us months still even now after we present them that we are living here for them to be able to get their pensions, social security pensions. Let's take the next one, another block. Again, and here there are a bunch of people who were marked dead. We presented them in four places. This is last year, in the last few months. Presented them in four places as being alive. What did they do? Because we've been asking for action to be taken against anyone who marks you falsely as being dead. They said, okay, we cancel that pension. We make a new pension. Let them apply for a new pension. So they lose a year and a half of pension. They don't get arrears so that that person can get away with whatever that they are doing. Let's go to the next slide. This is in pensions. Next. This is, I don't know how many of you are familiar, again, all these acronyms. ABPS is Aadhaar was okay, compulsory. Not mandatory, but compulsory. That you even had legal backing for. But that you won't stop with. After that, you have an Aadhaar-based payment system. Which means you have to, in that bank, go on again an acronym, an NPCI mapper. You have to get map there. You have to do another acronym, which we all deal with, KYC, which is again a nightmare. And then you can be, as a Narega worker, Aadhaar-based payment system enabled. Government of India passed an order. Nobody will be paid unless they are Aadhaar-based payment system enabled. No legal backing. Because the court said only Aadhaar. It didn't say after Aadhaar you keep adding one thing after another after another. So what is the figure that you have here? Again, I can't read it, but in June of last year, when they were threatening everyone that in five days, in ten days we are going to close it, roughly half Narega workers were not Aadhaar-based enabled. Now they are 
government of india is saying we've done made great progress we've even taken it to court court won't listen we've taken it everywhere nobody will listen they've said we'll make great progress the situation today next next slide no go back sorry it must be in that just go back down below no no, no last slide sorry yeah sorry <laughs> go back back yeah uh, <laughs> anyway it's uh, today there are 5% of narega workers active workers who are still not aadhar enabled how much is 5% of 13 crores 70 lakhs 70 lakh people are not aadhar based enabled so they won't get work they won't get work and have not been getting work since 31st December because government of India imposed that order without any legal backing and the courts will not listen. We have gone over and over again to court. The courts are not even listening to the case. So that's our digital public infrastructure. Which public? What digital? What infrastructure? What is it that we are doing over and over again and what does this mean? So let's go to the next. To give you an idea of what's happening in Bheem, what's happening elsewhere, just play that. This is this is just play that one little video. <laughs> Stop this. Play the other. This was last year, one year ago. Same process going on now, except then it was unverified. Now it's cancelled. <laughs> People have to be carried miles because it's disability pension. It's an old age pension of people, 90 year olds, 80 year olds who can't move at all, who are in that kind of situation that you saw earlier. These are after your government verification processes are over, four months, five months. And what's going on now is with cancelled. They've simply moved that lot into cancelled pensions. Now, I don't know any one of their houses if you were to go and think of our own grandparents or think of our own family members. There is no way on earth we would treat our own people like this. There is just no answer for what is being done and on what kind of scale and what mass level. And I don't think we understand even in the questions that we are getting into here. We don't understand the absolute um, insensitivity with which we deal with a lot of these issues. And there is a whole, now I'll get a little bit into the whole theory behind it. Out of this entire exercise came our demand for what is called the Jansuchna portal. If you all have a chance, please do look at it. Many privacy people feel deeply disturbed about what it is. It's our demand that brought it about. It is one of the most, section 4.2 of the Right to Information Act says, most information should be available to people without them having to ask for it. Digital information was hidden from people by what was called management information systems where only admin logins were existed with bureaucrats and people on, in, on top. We fought to remove those admin logins and we fought to build an entire website by the state, a platform by the state government where information was shared proactively through APIs. And in the last three years, since 2019, that demand arose in 2017, since 2019, there are now more than 17 crore times that that, that site has been accessed only for information. And more than 20 crore bits of information have been downloaded. 
for all these people where do they go jan suchna portal to find out why am i not getting my pension what is the problem what is the reason that's written out of state is that written even that's a struggle to get it to be written but at least you can get to know so that people's access to their own information is so critical and the thing is and this is something i'll come to at the end that it is very very critical in a social sense as well the poor don't have individual power they only have potential social power in a social democracy if we want to make that that's something very important for us to understand so in this idea of privacy we have to take that into account we have to take that social agency potentially that the poor will have and because they have nothing else and they cannot fight individual battles that you and i can fight we are also not able to fight it but they at least they cannot even begin to fight it so the digital data protection bill and the disaster that it is firstly it amends section 81j of the rti act and section 81j of the rti act was sat and built between privacy activists and rti activists to protect privacy within the framework of rti we really it amends it in such a disastrous way so that anything that's personal just this one thing i mean if you just look at two personal data means any data about an individual who is identifiable by, by or in relation to such data now if public officials which is what they were using even 81j for if they have this ability now we under 81j to use this in an absolute sense that's the end of finding any chor or anyone who's who's mark me dead somebody has mark me dead i can't identify that person somebody has not planted trees trees are not planted i can talk about who did not plant the trees i can't talk about who did not build the check dam i cannot talk about and then people like us who are not actually some activists we are actually if we weren't there these groups of people that that meeting you saw in beam that public hearing you saw in beam was not a government organized one it was organized by us at the bdo's office to pull them out and say here are people who you've not dealt with they've come to you you should be going to them so if you don't have people acting along with people not on behalf of but along with people you have no hope no hope at all as an individual as an indian citizen and so just this little bit i'll read the person so you become what is a breach of personal data the person responsible for potential any potential breach is called a data fiduciary which all rti activists now are. all of you are even if you are trying to protect pretend protect someone's privacy and under section 2j it means any person who alone or in conjunction with other persons determines the purpose and means of processing personal data of course we do that of course we are data fiduciaries under the under the act but the person to be protected is the data principal as the individual to whom the personal data relates personal data relates of course to the the pensioners but it also relates to who is doing what to the pensioners which public official is doing what what private official is doing what what contractor is doing what what thakur is doing what what whoever else is doing in caste in class in all forms of inequality and this is a, an act which is the end even for for journalists for lawyers for activists for individual citizens for all of us in no way that's why when you said we are in a depressing state because it has not been implemented we'll be in a more depressing state if it gets it gets implemented so i really make an appeal to all of you do read the act very carefully do read the act do read our critique if you like in indian express just write our name and see it if you agree with it don't agree with it tell us we are looking for a better view on that but we are unable to find it uh i don't know how much time i am finished so just give me 2 minutes very quickly i'll just make very quick points i think and the points are just like that sometime later we can discuss it there is a very big difference between a management information system which is what all these data uh these dpis are or the mises are and a janta information system the main point theoretically is that we must go to the people people must be able to control information people must be able to control how it's stored people must be able to control gig workers who controls their data aggregators what are aggregators again 
they are not just facebook they are the same ola uber they are getting all private data and the gig workers data and not sharing it with them and therefore in the gig workers build the whole battle is to get data actually more than anything else for the workers themselves a uh, social audit that we do is community audit using open data in an open way because everyone knows in any case who has done what but they don't have the proof for it if you don't have it you're destroying it so we need to go towards a digital commons we need to understand that digital is not all all technology is not just digital there are huge areas of technology we are leaving out which can help people we need to understand the centralizing force of digitizing in computing and we need to understand that the poor need to turn the tables using the same stuff because they have no choice it's being used against them so like rti turned the tables on the on on those who were using records against them the poor need to be able to find all of us as help and support to be able to turn the tables against them last thing i want to say is that the medium and process collection processing storage access dissemination all that needs to be in control of people if we want to go towards a better framework overall and we've often wondered what in this democracy that's so unequal what can we turn to and ambedkar really had some really powerful words that you need to look at liberty equality and fraternity together to build a social democracy not one separated from the other but as a triumvirate we need to apply those same principles to digital to data to privacy to the right to information that all three of these must be protected for all people and only then will we get an infrastructure or a structure or a system that's meaningful why do i have to be in situations of to follow that um but okay um you've heard our speakers let's break for a small q and a session now um this is also um a time where the panelists can speak to each other sorry for us for like restricting that from before but um there will be mics passed around can i have some um i have staffers with mics um please uh, raise your hands if you have a question please keep no comments just questions and the relevant uh, panelists can take them up there's two mics in front of you can do we have any questions we have uh, yeah Hi Shefali I'm Swati my question is you've mentioned about WHO collaborating with Indian government on something I'm sorry I missed it but does WHO not have a policy uh, privacy policy which it checks before collaborating with governments Um so this is yeah so um I was talking about the global digital health initiative which was launched I think sometime in February um and this is as part of um india's g20 presidency so it's one of the key deliverables uh, that they have committed to and it is along with the world health organization but i don't understand i didn't completely understand the second part uh, policy checks whether the government the national government follows any pri uh, uh, privacy uh, I don't know the rule oh, protection policy. That that is something that I am. I should should ask WHO. I am not aware, but yeah, this is happening. Um. Yes, gentlemen over there. Hi, Nikhil. This question is for you regarding RTI specifically. So, when you file RTIs, um, and there is a mandatory the period that within thirty days you're supposed to get a response, and otherwise the particular officer who is in charge of that is supposed to pay you back. So, in my this is my personal experience. I had once filed an RTI, and the RTI officer had called me personally saying, "Hi, I'm sorry, but I cannot give you the information that you have asked for because we simply do not have the data digitally." i had to go to eight separate ward offices and look at manual sheets that they had filled in for that data so when it comes to this idea of digitization that you that the panel has been speaking about versus the right to information what is the right balance that we look for that what level of digitization do we need to make this information accessible and where is this accountability to be placed on is this is it right to place this burden on that particular officer if not who else do we do it here yeah, the officer has no accountability if the data is not there in that form but the rti act actually in section 4 if you look at it says 
all information should be digitized so that it's easily accessible to people. I don't know whether everyone would agree with it or not. I think what I would say as a principle is that data that people require is what should be digitized. How they think it should be stored is again something people must have a say. How it should be processed is again something that people would must have a say. Because the RTI for the first time democratized information. It gave us the right to ask. It gave a duty to answer. So obviously for the first time in our independent history, we had the right to say this is what we want. And by what we want is what they will then start storing and keeping and looking. Otherwise today others are so-called rulers are actually determining what information should be there. The bureaucrats are doing that. And um, the accountability of the official is well protected if that data is not digitized. And then today, whichever form we have it, we should get access to it. And he doesn't pay you, by the way, it pays the state. It's not money that comes to you. It's not compensation. It's penalty. Um, can we have that in the corner, the gentleman in the corner, and then we can come here. Hi, hi, Nikhil. My question is to you. Um, so when you were presenting um, the case of uh, beneficiaries not getting access to services because they lack some identification, I noticed that you, you know, yourself revealed certain um, personally identifiable information regarding the names and uh, father's name and some other ID. So I wanted to know whether, you know, you see this as, I mean, one, did you collect consent for this when you sort of sort this out and two um uh did you did you sort of um state the purpose and the intent for collection because you have a number of organizations that collect data and while their intentions might be benevolent um you know they do not necessarily take privacy that seriously yeah so in that article we wrote the reality is that if this bill, data protection bill, is passed, millions of us are and will be in continual breach of its provisions. I am. I am in breach every single day. And I am in breach because I simply don't agree with, that's why I said that we need to have a social understanding of how data, at least in our country, is used. We need to have a social understanding of how data, it's collected already, it's taken already, those systems are totally skewed against us. Uh, we we meaning people in Rajasthan fought for muster rolls to be made public so that you knew the names of who was working on them, what they were being paid, and then painted on the walls of that village how many days someone has worked and how much money they had earned in a year so that you can make out who was stealing because there was huge amounts of theft and it made a huge difference. So the entire approach is different. So yeah, no, we did not take consent. Government is the one who's collecting this data. Government is the only one who is looking at it exclusively. Our whole battle in right to information has been that what government sees in all these public things is what people should see because they are much, much better equipped to be able to deal with it. And the people who you saw, that's what I kept saying right through that. I did not make a claim that we are protecting privacy rights. I said they desperately need allies. They desperately need that information in public domain because otherwise they will just die unknown Maybe in private, but completely unrecognized even for what's being done to them. Thank you. Another question from you. Yeah, Mr. Nathil, in Haryana, in addition to Aadhaar, it's one called Parvar Pachan Patra, family card. And if you want to change Aadhaar, your mobile number, and you have to pay 100 rupees, 50 rupees for government, 50 rupees for the person who's doing it. And if you want to add any number of family pachan patra, the thing is moving without money. And people are getting pension. If they are paying more than one year, two years, they will get it done. Otherwise, it will not be done. So this pravar pachan patra has become a very big issue. And government has started its own Haryana only. And nothing is happening. Any government activity, even if people, students can't go for exam. And OTP is a big issue. Everybody can't have it, their uh, smartphone. Well, this is a very pity condition. Why not to do something more simplified way so that people are friendly with the system? I agree with you. <laughs> I agree.
I have no argument with you, but Haryana is not unique, by the way. Almost every state has a family identity which is being made. Haryana is one of the, the latest in that. Rajasthan has Janadhar. Madhya Pradesh was one of the first that made a family card. You need to match your Aadhaar with your Janadhar, then match the Aadhaar, Janadhar with, the, uh, with your voter ID, then match that. with If your driver's license somehow shows something wrong, then you have a problem. So there is every kind of problem that that's possible and because it's not affecting you and me as much it's affecting people much less powerful it carries on um, okay we'll take two more questions we'll keep it extremely brief people with brief questions only <laughs> okay uh, okay two gentlemen uh, one red shirt and then the green no oh okay okay go on so i have a very simple question to ask like uh, following the previous question that we have understood that the Aadhaar has a lot of problems like it is breach of privacy, breach of trust and even the information in the Aadhaar card is sometimes wrong. But uh, the level of uh, Aadhaar card has spread in the country right now means the number of people who has Aadhaar card. So, it's uh, more than enough of people. Sorry? <laughs> number yeah. of people who have Aadhaar is more than enough of people. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So, what can the possible solution which you can advise to of all these issues? What is the possible solution? <laughs> I, I simply don't understand. Yeah, I don't have, I mean, I don't have any other additional solution or even at all that is available. So the only thing that I think a monopoly system in technology like Aadhaar. We so simply cannot shut down this whole Aadhaar thing. I am saying if you listen to me, sorry. I am saying that the only thing that I can suggest that would make things better is you cannot have a single monopoly. You have to have Aadhaar. That's the only way you'll go. You have to match Aadhaar and Janadhar. That's the only way you go. Technology itself says provide alternatives and where there are roadblocks come through it through other means. This is one means that if you're not there, you're dead. If you don't have it or if you don't have it the right way or if your phone number is wrong or if you're one uh, address. Now, they started off by saying only your thumb matters, only your biometric matters or your iris scan matters. Now everything in that Aadhaar card matters and each one of them to get them corrected is a nightmare. So you have a monopoly system, that's a problem. You have to have an alternative. I must get my, what my rights are must be guaranteed. Then you use systems to make it better. But if you breach that guarantee, you pay. You should be accountable, whoever has decided that that's the system. All right, okay, so before you start, um, question in one line, then you pass to the gentleman behind you. Question in one line. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, question in one line, that's your challenge. Sure. Let's go. So, no, that I, I'm not putting yet. No, no, so I actually uh, look for a little comprehensive answer here. So I understand that the JAMDBD scheme is not uh, applied efficiently, so to say. I mean, if I have to summarize everything. So there is inefficiencies, deliberate or not, I'm not sure. But it is not being applied properly. So uh, when... Coming to the solution part, do you see any model in the world right now where it has been done well, where India can take inspiration from? Let's say Lithuania is a country or there is Estonia is a country where e-governance is really popular. So do you see any inspiration where India can take in terms of making the governance better and coming up with a potential solution for such uh, disaster mistakes? And second, your thoughts on how can we decentralize this monopolistic power of Aadhaar? Is there any inspiration from any other country? that you have come about or have researched about. So Thank your you. first question is for Ambar. Your first question is for Ambar and your second question is for Nikhil. Yes, yes, at the extreme level. Okay, so I'll let Ambar answer the AI question. Anyone, anyone. Nikhil anyone. answer the second. That was a very long sentence. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so there are obviously a lot of models for digital identification that exist globally. The, I think the fundamental question also sort of responding to the gentleman before you is what is the problem that we are trying to solve? When Aadhaar started, they said we're trying to solve the problem of efficiency because there are too many bogus uh, uh, you know, card holders in the PDS system. And there the assumption was that the efficiency lay was at the, at the POS shop level, that there are too many ghosts and too many duplicates, and but there were other points of efficiency which the government was not interested in solving, right? So in, in a state like Tamil Nadu, those points of efficiency were solved by just having GPS 
installed in vehicles which would carry rations uh, from to, to different parts of the state, and then you could track where uh, effectively you know there was corruption involved. So the 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 issue is: is digital identification really necessary to solve a lot of efficiency problems that particularly states in the south? are facing my at least my assessment is that it is not necessary and particularly a biometric based digital id solution is a poor one because the the, the cost of breach is irreversible in, in a lot of instances the, you mentioned a few countries like estonia and others they have better e governance system most definitely they they have their own problems but the scale at which they're dealing with uh, is is very very different from from india right so I, I don't think that there is any existing model of digital ID that necessarily the Indian state should have looked to emulate. I don't think uh, the I, I, ID systems in its in in the way that it was envisioned was necessarily the right uh, direction in which we needed to go. Um, yeah, your question was how do we get out of monopolies? By removing monopolies, <laughs> <laughs> remove Aadhaar, we'll get rid of that monopoly. But in a more serious fashion, I, I am at least part of the group that believes that, let's say for something like monitoring, which is what Aadhaar is supposed to be watching, monitoring, chori ho rahe, is that actually people at that level will monitor much better. Your bureaucrats couldn't care less. They don't care about that school. They don't care about that. I mean, they care if they're a good bureaucrat, but they are few and far between. They care because their kids are going to a private stuff. It's those people in those communities who care about whatever is either distributed or whatever is supposed to come or whatever the entitlements. So socialize and make work on those democratic systems rather than think because it is a, it is a technocrat's dream. And I hope they're that we are not all moving towards becoming technocrats. What's the solution? One more technocratic solution. This is one more nightmare. Let me tell you one very quickly because it's interesting. Narega, which I didn't manage to mention, has something called NMMS, another four letters. National Mobile Monitoring System. In the 13 crore Narega workers spread across every remote part of every panchayat, even in the panchayat, they are in remote parts. You have to take photographs twice a day for attendance and upload them, and otherwise you do not get attendance. Can you believe that? Our phones don't work in this city. connectivity But there, you have to upload a photograph. Okay, you have that monopoly. You cannot get attendance without that. But if there's internet shutdown, all that leave upside, we have taken to them saying 13 crore photographs are being put, or whatever, in a particular day, 5 crore, twice a day. And you have photos finally because they know they're they are taking photos of goats, of markets, of whatever. They have to upload some group of photographs. So we've taken it and said, what action have you taken on even one case so far since you've had NMMS? Not one have you taken action. So what are we doing? What kind of intelligence are we applying to whatever? If we you want to put a system which is costing so much, you should see the cost to people. They are climbing up hills, not doing work, climbing up hills to get their photo taken and upload it there and there are all kinds of ways to game a system if you think that they're coming ghungat laga rahe hain photo leke ja rahe hain sab kuch kar rahe hain phir bhi aap keh rahe ho nahi hamara bahut badhiya technocrat <laughs>